Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you another requirement which I have done earlier like that. I'm going to show you another requirement and I'm going to go over what is required. If you want to get into a non-coding job in medical devices, uh, what is required, how to read the requirement is what I'm going to show you. I've already done one in the past, maybe like a couple of days ago. So this is the another one. I've taken these requirements just from LinkedIn or any job site. So you also, if you want, if you're looking for anything like these things, you don't have to look very far. You can just find it from any job sites. All right, so let me share my screen and I'm going to show you the requirement and also how do you read it, okay? Let's see. All right, so this is a requirement that I took it from LinkedIn. Um, if you see, this was posted by a company called Bayer. And um, when you read these, usually they write about the company. And then there is this staff software quality engineer. Now, the earlier position I did one on senior manager in the quality uh, engineering. But this is a staff level, meaning like it is a senior level, but it is not like you don't that they don't have to necessarily manage people here. So if you see, what is the difference between quality? Let's just go over that one minute and then I'll go into this detail. Keep in mind, so there is this R&D area, okay? When you are in the R&D space and if you are a validation engineer or a verification engineer, what you actually do is looking at the testing and also the requirement gathering, all those things. Now you will write those deliverables. Or maybe you might be an active contributor to those deliverables. How a test plan is written, how a verification plan is written, how you may even write test protocols and all that. When you see a quality in the requirement, that means quality person will not be creating them, but they will be reviewing those activities. That is the difference. So they are looking for a staff quality software engineer, and this position is responsible to perform um, software quality management activity. Now they are looking into class two medical devices. Okay, so they are clearly saying like, I want class two medical devices. So if you have experience working in class two, or even class three also, um, you know, uh, you can apply to this. So they have explained clearly what are the tasks and responsibilities. So if you see the quality management, SIMD, now basically software as a medical device is one thing, software in the medical device is another thing. It is mainly sometimes like an embedded one. So of class two, class one, and then they are showing like, okay, what all you need. And then there comes a regulation. Now keep in mind, if you are, if you are getting into this quality world, then you need to know these regulations. Now you get into medical devices world, then you need to understand. But when you're coming from an R&D background or you're going to be a developer, like they, don't, they don't have medical devices background all the time because there the focus is different. You're only looking at testing or you're only looking at gathering uh, requirements and all that. But here, you really need to understand the regulation because you're not only understanding it, you need to show other people how things are done, what to look for and all that. So getting into medical devices, these are the regulation standards you need to understand, and particularly into the software world, all right? So these are the areas they have mentioned. And then of course, like, um, you know, software risk analysis, because that is one of the areas. You can actually map all these things with this. Here is this uh, software development life cycle that falls under here. Software risk management falls under here. It's basically all the quality management system, how you develop falls under here, so all those things. And also, if you see here, they didn't say create the deliverables, but here they're saying review all the deliverables. That means you're going to be reviewing this. All right. So then part 11 comes into picture and all that. Okay, you can read this at your own time. But here I'm going to try to tell you what to look for and what is important for the uh, hiring manager. All right. So required qualification. If you look here, they're clearly saying required classification, preferred qualification. Now. They're okay with you having a little bit of preferred qualification, not that's totally fine. But whenever, wherever they say required qualification, if you don't fall under it, then you don't have to apply because they've clearly said this is what they want. So if you look, 
they want to have they need to have at least bachelor's degree that is minimum eight years of work experience in quality engineering or quality engineering software engineering or quality engineering this is why they are saying see if you have worked in the r d space and done these activities then when you come into the quality space you will know what to review okay so that also will help so if you're an r d person who's trying to get into quality this works perfect also, they are saying minimum of eight years they need experience with these medical devices because in when applying for these, usually people get confused and then the CSV folks like computer system validation will apply to the thinking that SAMD everything is the same. It is not the same. They're very different. All right. Some things may be the same, but mostly they follow different paths. So that is why they are clearly saying you need to have devices experience and then four, exp four years of experience in these things. So they have said very clearly what is that they need. And then if you see here, this general principles of software validation and these things will, will be uh, similar or will be the same if you are in CSV, this also will apply to you. So they're asking for this. And then uh, if you say multiple projects and all that. Now, preferred qualification, like I told you, this is not something that 100% they need, but they would be very happy if you have this uh, experience also. So there are some things in here. So working knowledge of all these tools. Now keep in mind, even though you think non-coding IT job, non-coding means you're not a developer there, but at the same time, you will be certain tools because I think people, all the industry are moving away from the documentation into the electronic side, paperless space. So that is why. So I hope this was helpful. And like I said, I've already done a video like this for another requirement. I hope this was helpful. See you next. Bye.